Our breakfast sandwich you love served on a freshly baked butter croissant. It's pronounced croissant. And if you can't silent T, I will silence you. Today is a special day, it's our 50th video. And thank you so much for your support thus far. And if you come in across this video and you ain't subscribed yet, it's your time to shine. All right, today we're tackling on this special video, a special dish, the croissant. We're gonna make it at home because I'm not a professional baker like my friend Romain Dufou, who's doing croissant like a real pro, but I'm gonna show you that we can achieve this beautiful pastry that requires a lot of work, but it's so worthy. Two things remain to be done, for us to get cooking and for you to subscribe. Let's go. So this is day one and we're gonna start with the détrempe, which is what's gonna encase the butter, okay? So I'm gonna put my water that is warm, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as my yeast and a little bit of sugar. Then we're gonna let that rest and develop for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm gonna add my dry ingredients with the flour, the salt, and the remaining of the sugar. We're gonna let that go in the mixer with the hook attachment for about 30 seconds or a minute, just so it's fully combined. Next, we are going to grab our high quality butter, high in fat, we're gonna place it on the heat and we're going to melt it, okay? So don't boil it, just melt it over. Then I'm gonna add my egg yolk, I'm gonna grab my mixture of yeast, sugar and water that is now fully developed and I'm gonna grab my butter and we're gonna also add that to the mix. What do we do next? Well, we're gonna actually turn the mixer on and we're gonna mix it until it turns into a beautiful smooth dough which then I'll stop and I will place on my bench because as you know by now, I love to finish kneading my dough by hand because I can feel the dough and be in control. So this is what I'm going to be doing next and for that, I wanted to give you a beautiful transition. All right, I'm gonna roll the dough over itself, make sure I'm working it, develop that gluten and when I'm happy with a beautiful and nice smooth dough and I will then give it a nice little pat and I'm gonna take that dough, place it into a bowl which I will be then covering with some plastic wrap and I'll place that in the fridge for about 10 minutes for a little nap, as we say. All right, it's been 10 minutes, so I'm gonna take my dough and what I'm gonna be doing is actually folding it over itself. So I'm gonna grab the bottom of the dough and I'm gonna move up to the top. Once I've done that, I'm gonna grab the same dough, flip it over and I'm gonna roll it so it's nice and smooth. I will then place it back into my bowl with the plastic and I'm gonna give it a second nap of another 10 minutes. That dough is very sleepy. And we're gonna repeat what we did before. We're gonna unwrap it, take the bottom of the dough and fold it over itself. Then we'll place it on the bench to give it more strength and we're gonna roll it around until it's nice and smooth. Put it back in the bowl, recover it, and this time we're gonna give it a 25 minute rest. We want the dough to be nicely rested, so basically when we roll it, it's not going to stretch back on us. So I'm gonna take my dough, degas it a little bit if need be, and then we're gonna try to achieve a rectangle. So we're gonna use our rolling pin and you, don't, you do not need any flour or anything, it shouldn't be sticking too much to the bench. My goal is to roll it to about five by seven inches, right? So basically uh, we're gonna make a single batch of croissant which is gonna make about six. So what's very important is to make sure we always keep the shape, right? So. If you don't have the exact measurement, that's okay, but make sure you have a rectangle because this is going to be the form we're gonna try to keep all across the process of making the croissant. Once we're happy with it, we're gonna wrap it up and then the quick technique is to actually use the saran wrap and then to the right size and then we're gonna use our, see, so I'm measuring it right now. Then I'm gonna use my rolling pin and I'm gonna actually roll it with the plastic so it's going to go into the edges of the plastic to give me the perfect size of my rectangle. I will then place it in the fridge for about 12 hours or overnight. 12 hours later. 
All right, welcome back for day number two. And we're gonna talk about butter because croissant is all about the butter. If you don't have a really high quality butter, you're not gonna have really good croissant. And trust me on this. So don't hesitate to spend a bit of money and make sure you have at least 85% fat when it comes to butter for croissant or for baking in general. Then we're gonna do the same thing as we did with the détrempe, but this time with the tourage, we're gonna make the butter to be a size of about four by five roughly. So I'm gonna wrap it in some parchment paper and I'm gonna literally use the strength of the paper to get my perfect rectangle and lay it flat and making sure that it's filling the entire parchment paper, right? So when I'm happy with my rectangle, I'm gonna wrap it up and leave it in the freezer for about two minutes so it's hard. Meanwhile, I'm gonna grab my détrempe that has been rested overnight. I'm gonna take it out of the plastic and we're gonna degas it because the yeast has developed a little bit so I'll make sure it's nice and flat. Then we're gonna actually roll it slightly, not too, too much, just to kind of like push it down, maybe using your rolling pin a little bit, just maybe like to get an extra half inch or so. I'm gonna then grab my butter then it's not hardened and that's very important to make sure that at all time, the dough and the butter is very cool, otherwise it's going to melt and break, okay? As you can see. Then I'm gonna take my dough, stretch it slightly and fold it over. Basically, I want to meet ends. So I'm gonna take one side of the skirt per se, and then the other side, and we're gonna make sure it's nicely and covering the butter. And if it needs to be stretched, stretch it, right? Next, we're gonna take a rolling pin and then we're gonna tap that dough, okay? Because before we really wanna make sure that butter is kind of incorporated and it doesn't go everywhere. Then we're gonna roll it down. You're gonna flip the dough and very important, make sure it's always rectangle and you keep that very straight. The goal is to get it to 18 inches long. So the width is not so important, but what's important is to make sure you have a perfect rectangle and it 18 inch long. Then we're gonna flip it over itself, creating an envelope, which is called a single fold. Basically, we are starting to create all these layers that will be beautiful in a croissant by folding the dough over itself, over itself, over itself, and again, and again, and again. <laughs> anyway, we are going to wrap it with some plastic wrap, making sure I'm uh, catching this rolling pin as I go. Uh, wrap it tightly, we don't want any air to go into the dough, and we're gonna place it in the fridge for an hour rest and we're gonna move on to the next step after that. An hour has passed, so I'm going to grab my dough, unwrap it, I'm gonna place it on my bench, and we're gonna re-roll it. Obviously, you have to make sure the right way, so if you see those layers, that's the way we do it, and we're gonna go across, okay? So because we are creating more layers. Same idea as before, we're gonna go 18 inches long, making sure it's nice and rectangle, and then we are going to fold it over itself in an envelope, and we're gonna rest it for another hour after we're done. What's very important is not to break the butter. So when you push it down, you do not want to actually press too, too hard. Otherwise the butter is gonna come out of the dough and then when you proof it and when you bake it, the butter is gonna come out. It's going to be a disaster. You're not gonna have a beautiful croissant and you'll be mad at me. So just be careful and do that. Once we fold it into an envelope, we're gonna rest it for an hour, as I said, and we'll repeat the process one more time, but instead of resting it for an hour, you're gonna rest it for two hours or what I would prefer for 12 hours or overnight. So I will see you for day number three. The next morning. Day three, our final day. We're gonna actually bake some croissant today. So it's early in the morning, I haven't done my hair yet, so I'm wearing a hat, but that's just my life story. Anyway, we gave our dough threefold. It's going to be beautiful when we bake it. But before we roll it, we're gonna let it rest for about 15 minutes, just so it kind of come back to temperature. Same idea, we're gonna tap it with a rolling pin and roll it because this time we're not looking for 18 inches, but what we're looking for is for something that's going to be about half an inch thick, but more so 20 centimeters high, which I believe is seven and a half inches. But you know what, I'm European, I do everything in centimeters, so. It's in my recipe in the description below so you can find the right measurements. Anyway, once we're happy with the side of the dough, we're going to cut our croissant. So we're gonna go across every nine centimeters, which I believe is three and a half inch. And for the top part, we'll start with four and a half centimeters, then we'll go back to go nine centimeters every time. So basically we're gonna create some triangles. Then I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm gonna meet each point to create those triangle all the way through until I create six 
croissant and I'm gonna have a little bit of dough left over which is what I call the staff meal for you know when you've been baking croissant you deserve to have a little treat and I'm gonna grab my triangle and I'm gonna pull it slightly just to create a bit of an edge and then I'm gonna pull to the side and I'm gonna roll it over itself to create a beautiful croissant then we will repeat the process with them all making sure um, they are nice and tight and very important to use the bottom of the triangle to kind of like tuck them in so they actually don't roll over themselves when they proof. Then we're gonna do some egg wash, so just an egg yolk and a bit of water. And we're gonna carefully brush the croissant. We don't want to actually brush the layer, but just the top part. So when it actually bakes, you'll still see those layers. And we work so hard on them, it'll be kind of sad not to see them. Then once we're done with all the egg wash, I'm going to place it in my oven that is on proof, but otherwise you could also do it on just cold oven until it doubled in size. Two hours later. Okay, so our croissants are ready for one more brush of a delicious egg wash. And then the next step is going to be cooking them. So my oven is preheated at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm gonna bake them for about 20 minutes or until they're fully cooked and beautiful golden browned. And we are going to obtain what I call heaven on earth. Well, look at this, they look incredible and I'm so excited to try them. My puppy's here because he's also excited, but let's just get it open and look at the side crumb, the inside and wow i mean i'm pretty happy for croissant made at home i'm gonna say that's pretty pretty good and here we go a labor of love that is very true in this case a three-day process that can be shortened to two days if you really wanted to butter is very important um, as well as all the love you're gonna put into it but trust me those are so satisfying. It smells amazing in this kitchen. You can really smell home, which is France for me. I'm going to try it, but I wanted to thank you so much once again for your support so far. We're close to a thousand subscriber. I would love if you tell your friends about it and you share that beautiful croissant video. I'm going to try it and it's going to be very messy. So I'm gonna say goodbye and I will catch you on the next episode. I'm sorry, but that is just so good. Hmm.